In this video, we'll be covering the top 10 bowling drills that can be used by all bowlers. When it comes to bowling, there are three main disciplines. Finger spin, wrist spin, and seam bowling. Although all three of these actions appear different from a visual perspective, they share a lot of similarities when it comes to the actions themselves. The drills we have selected for this video apply to all three disciplines as well as to right-handed and left-handed bowlers. These drills will help you if done correctly. Number 10. When it comes to bowling, it is important that your wrist works in the correct line to stay behind the ball to give us the most effort behind the ball and make sure that the ball is moving in the right directions and with the right movement on it. So for seamers, we're going to focus on making sure that the wrist stays in a straight line behind the ball. We're going to start initially with the underhand flex, really making sure that the fingers stay on the ball as long as possible, trying to present the seam nice and upright. Once you get comfortable with that, we would then look at going over the top and pulling down on the ball to more replicate your bowling action. Moving on to finger spinners, we're going to have a line that can be a line that's there or you can have a man-made line. We're going to throw the ball up, holding it as we would as an off spinner, and trying to get the ball to bounce on the one side and then turn to bounce on the other side. This is to show that we are getting revs on the ball and to train the fingers through the ball. For wrist spin, it's going to be very similar to what it was for finger spin. We are going to use the same line with the wrist spinner's grip on the ball and we're going to turn it the other way. This is just important to make sure that you are getting through the ball as much as possible with a little bit of a wrist movement through it to really impart those revolutions. Number 9 for this draw, we're going to be doing double band arm rotations. How this works is there's going to be a band on the pole in front of you and a band on the pole behind you. You're going to start in your bowling action and you're then going to use your front arm to pull the band up and let it pull you forward and the band behind you with your bowling arm to really pull through to get used to completing the action. The bands help with the resistance in the action so you can feel what it feels like when you're going at closer to your maximum effort. It makes you feel where your body is moving in relation to the bands behind you because it's directly behind you and directly in front of you. If you go out of those lines, the bands are going to pull you back into the lines. This can be used for all three of the different actions. Number eight. The next one we are going to use, we're going to call bowling along the side net. But it doesn't have to be a net. It just has to be something physical that can create a barrier for you to work along to make sure that our lines are good. You're going to start with a net on the right hand side. This is for seamers. You're going to keep going forward and pulling through your action, trying to replicate your match intensity in the action. This is to make sure that your arm doesn't go too wide or too round. And at the same time, it forces our follow through in a nice straight line so our energy is driving towards the target as much as possible. For leg spin or wrist spin, what you're going to do is you're going to have the net on your left hand side. This is to make sure that your arm doesn't fall away and that you stay nice and upright in your action. The reason we can't use the net on the other side is because your arm is going to come through into the net and it is not going to be beneficial. For finger spin, it is basically the same as for the seamer. We only demonstrated going with the net on the right hand side of us to make sure that we didn't go too round with our arm because that is going to negate the revs on the ball. Number seven. For this next rule, we're going to be bowling off the knee. Initially, to make sure that we've got comfort with the upper part of our action, and secondly, to learn a variation. For seam, you're making sure that everything is still going towards the target without having to worry about the low half, looking to hit the pitch nice and hard while pulling through. The variation we did here was the off cutter, making sure that the lines are good and also so that we can see how it reacts off of the surface. For finger spin, it is exactly the same as the seam when it comes to your stock delivery. It's to build comfort and to watch how the ball reacts off of the surface. We then went and worked on the variation here, which was the arm ball. And finally, for wrist spin, yet again, we used it to see how the ball reacts off of the surface and just to get comfortable with our action. But for this one, we focused on the googly. Number six. Next up, we're going to be doing standing in your action and bowling. This is the same for all three actions, except you'll change it according to your action. It's really important because you can focus on the whole body without having to worry about the momentum of your run-up changing anything and really getting our body used to getting into that position and nice and strong to make sure that our release points are consistent and that our action is consistent at the same time. Number five. For next up, we are going to be focusing on the approach, the follow through and bowling channels. For this, we set up cones to make sure that our approach is in a straight line our follow through follows through towards our target with a slight takeoff at the end and a channel of cones where we'd like to see the ball going through. 
This should be the same for all three actions because lines are important and if our lines are working in the right areas, we are going to bowl in the right areas. So making sure that we're approaching through the cones, following through the cone and trying to get the ball going through the cones. All those lines are working together, so as a fast bowler, that's going to help us get through the crease and towards our target, maybe bowling the ball a bit heavier. For spinners, it's just going to allow us to work through our action a bit longer, which is important because that's how we get more revs on the ball. Number four. Next up, we are going to be looking at the bound and ball. This is very similar to the standing and bowling, except we are now putting the bound into the gather, into the action as well. But again, we do not have the momentum from the runner. So just focusing on this part of the action to make sure that it's good and consistent so that we can get the most out of each of our bowling actions. This draw remains the same for each of the three different disciplines. Number three. Next up, we're going to be focusing on balance. I know it sounds pretty simple, but if we can get our stabilizing muscles strong and make sure that our balance is good, everything in the crease is then going to work towards where we want to go. For this, we use a soft surface. It could be a trampoline, it could be a balance ball, it could even be a pillow. Anything that is soft to make sure that when you land on it, the stabilizing muscles have to work because it's not an even surface. We split this into two different things. For the first part, we are just going to be standing on the uneven surface, making sure that we are nice and still. Try and hold it for at least three seconds because this will make sure that the stabilizing muscles have worked and your body is in a nice strong position. For the second one, we are going to be taking a step back and taking a step onto the uneven surface. This is providing a bit more momentum, which is going to make it a little bit more challenging for you to get that balance. But at the end of the day, if we can do it on an uneven surface in this challenging mode, when we are full run up and bowling through the crease, our balance will be ideal. Number two. Next up, we're going to be doing the bowling spread drop. This is important because it allows the bowler to see where the ball is bouncing and what he needs to work on to be more consistent. If it is a big spread, you might need to use some of these previous rolls to make sure that our lines into the crease are good so that you can compact that and really make sure that your areas are ideal for what you are trying to accomplish. You can do this for each of the actions, but it's important to have a friend that can put the cones down. Because as bowlers, we sometimes always don't watch the ball off the bounce because we're trying to see how it reacts at the back of the net. This draw is primarily used to improve your consistency or to notice what your consistency is. Number one. This last draw is the most difficult draw in our opinion. And this is why it's made the last place on our list. The draw is bowling from a higher platform, but we have also made it off of an uneven surface to really focus on that balance and to make sure that you're coming off the platform. The reason we bowl for higher platform is to assist with bracing the front leg through the crease to make sure that we can really get over it and maximize our height potential in the crease and also use those lines that I've spoken about earlier towards the target more effectively. This draw will remain the same for all three disciplines. As a fast bowler, it braces your front leg to get your momentum going over it and hitting your targets a lot easier. For spin, it helps brace the front leg again, which helps get us more height, which can give us more bounce, which as a spinner is another weapon to your arsenal. And for the leggies, it makes sure that we spend time on the front foot to enable us to get our wrist through the ball to make sure that we can get as much revs on it as possible in the right direction. A big thank you to all the members that help support this channel and a special thank you to Ray, Hammer, Stanio, Yuan, Lima and Ligeria 